All right, so again, like we have said the past few days, we are annotating the Black Cat by Edgar Allan Poe. We are mainly looking to determine a theme or central idea of the text and analyze how the theme is developed over the course of the text, including its relationship to the characters, setting, and plot. We are also working to provide objective summaries of the text and to define unknown words because this is a, a rather complicated text with Edgar Allan Poe's writing and his use of sophisticated vocabulary. And we're making further connections to the Telltale Heart and comparing how Edgar Allan Poe's writing is similar in two different stories. So yesterday, we ended off right here. I'm on page six, and we finished this paragraph. And we were talking about how the narrator feels guilty um, and he is seeing this image in the wall. Remember his house burned down and he's seeing this image in the wall of um, the cat with a rope around the cat's neck. And that image is making him feel guilty because he did harm his cat, right? Um, so we're thinking that our narrator's feeling guilty. We're wondering right now if he actually is seeing this image um, in the wall, right? It seems like other people are seeing this image. And we're trying to think about um, what our narrator is thinking right now. Okay, so again, it says this apparition and we talked about how that's like a ghost-like image and how um, he feels like he's almost being cursed or this image that he's seeing in the wall is representative of his guilt and how he is feeling remorseful. And then he was also coming up with this um, story, which he started to do here. Um, Upon the alarm of the fire, the garden had been immediately filled by the crowd. And when he says this had probably been done with a view of arousing me from my sleep, the falling walls um, compressed the victim of my cruelty into the substance of the freshly spread plaster. He's trying to make up an excuse, right? So we can say here that he is trying to rationalize the image he sees by making up a false scenario. He's trying to rationalize the image that he sees in the wall by making up a false scenario. Although I thus readily accounted to my reason, if not altogether my conscience, for the startling fact just detailed, it did not the less fail to make a deep impression upon my fancy. For months, I could not rid myself of the phantasm of the cat, and during this period, there came back into my spirit a half-sentiment that seemed, but was not, remorse. I went so far as to regret the loss of the animal, and to look about me among the vile haunts which I now habitually frequented for another pet of the same species and of somewhat similar appearance with which to supply its place. So he wants to get a new black cat. Did you highlight any words in this paragraph? This is Nkosi and I highlighted habitually. Thank you, Nkosi.
So habitually is to do something often or to make a habit of something. Like a routine. Again, please let me know if at any time we're moving too quickly. One night, as I sat half stupefied in a den of more than infamy, my attention was suddenly drawn to some black object reposing upon the head of one of the immense hogsheads of gin or of rum, which constituted the chief furniture of the apartment. I had been looking steadily at the top of the hogshead for some minutes, and what now caused me surprise was the fact that I had not sooner perceived the object thereupon. I approached it and touched it with my hand. It was a black cat, a very large one, fully as large as Pluto, and closely resembling him in every respect but one. Pluto had not a white hair upon any portion of his body, but this cat had a large, although indefinite, splotch of white covering nearly the whole region of the breast. So we can say, I think I have someone getting in the meeting. Yay, it's Kieran. Hi, Kieran. All right, so for this paragraph, we can say that he has found a new cat that resembles Pluto, but this one has a white mark on their chest. What's a potential inference we could make here as well with him finding this new cat? based on what we know about our narrator. This is Ancosi, and I think maybe he's being haunted, you know, by other cats that look like Pluto. Thank you, Nkosi, that's a good inference. Does anyone else have an inference about what may happen next based on what we know about our narrator? This is Jody and I think that he might take in the cat to keep. Thank you, Jody. Does anyone else have an inference about what he might do with this cat? This is Luke, and I think maybe he's jealous of it. Thank you, Luke. So whatever your inference is, you can put it right here. I'm going to say that I can infer that the narrator will keep the cat and maybe he will hurt it later on. What words did you highlight in this paragraph? This is Destiny and I highlighted the right infamy. Thank you, Destiny. This is Ancosi, and I highlight stupefied. Stupefied. If any of you watch Harry Potter, that's one of the spells in Harry Potter. I watch Harry Potter. <laughs> it kind of means to stun, right? Like to stun them. It's not really to make them stupid, but it's to um, the spell in Harry Potter is to stun them. Stupefy.
Any other words that we highlighted? Okay, I'm gonna leave these for you guys to come back to later on just so that we can get a little further on. Does anyone need me to pause right here? Okay. Upon my touching him, he immediately arose, purred loudly, rubbed against my hand and appeared delighted with my notice. This then was the very creature of which I was in search. I at once offered to purchase it off the landlord, but this person made no claim to it, knew nothing of it, had never seen it before. I continued my caresses, and when I prepared to go home, the animal evinced a disposition to accompany me. I permitted it to do so, occasionally stooping and patting it as I proceeded. When it reached the house, it domesticated itself at once and became immediately a great favorite with my wife. How can we summarize those two paragraphs? This is Anjali and um, basically the, he went and like pet the cat and the cat liked him so he brought it home with him and his wife liked the cat as well. Thank you Anjali. So we can say that the narrator took the cat home and his wife liked it. Any words that we highlighted in those two paragraphs? This is Sophia and I highlight domesticated. Thank you, Sophia. So domesticated. This is Anjali and I highlighted evinced. Thank you, Anjali. For my own part, I soon found a dislike to it arising within me. This was just the reverse of what I had anticipated, but I know not how or why it was. Its evident fondness for myself rather disgusted and annoyed me. By slow degrees, these feelings of disgust and annoyance rose into the bitterness of hatred. I avoided the creature, a certain sense of shame and the remembrance of my former deed of cruelty, preventing me from physically abusing it. I did not for some weeks strike or otherwise violently ill use it, but gradually, very gradually, I came to look upon it with unutterable loathing and to flee silently from its odious presence as from the breath of a pestilence. What words did you highlight here? This is Nkosi and I highlighted pestilence. Pestilence. Thank you, Nkosi. This is Anjali and I highlighted odious. Thank you, Anjali.
So here we could say that he begins to hate the cat, right? That's what loathing means. And he says he was disgusted and annoyed by it. So he begins to hate the cat, but he does not harm it because he still feels guilty about Pluto. What added no doubt to my hatred of the beast was the discovery on the morning after I brought it home that like Pluto, it had also been deprived of one of its eyes. This circumstance, however, only endeared it to my wife, who, as I have already said, possessed in a high degree that humanity of feeling which had once been my distinguishing trait and the source of many of my simplest and purest pleasures. The new cat is also missing an eye. His wife is compassionate like he once was as a child. Remember, our narrator has changed. In the beginning of the story, he told us that he used to be very sensitive and very caring towards all of these animals to the point where he was even made fun of as a kid for that quality. But now, due to um, several different things, he has changed his behavior. He has changed his feelings. He's become more violent. Um, we know that he's told us that part of that change was due to his alcoholism. Um, but we also are inferring that maybe that change could also be due to some sort of mental illness, like the narrator and the telltale heart as well. Did you highlight any words in this paragraph? Nope. With my aversion to this cat, however, its partiality for myself seemed to increase. It followed my footsteps with a pertinacity which it would be difficult to make the reader comprehend. Whenever I sat, it would crouch beneath my chair or spring upon my knees, covering me with its loathsome caresses. If I arose to walk, it would get between my feet, thus nearly throw me down, or fastening its long and sharp claws in my dress, clamber, in this manner to my breast. At such times, although I longed to destroy it with a blow, I was yet withheld from so doing, partly by mem memory of my former crime, but chiefly, let me confess it at once, by absolute dread of the beast. What words did you highlight here? This is Nicholas and I highlighted pertinacity. Thank you, Nicholas. This is Sophia, and I highlighted Lonesome. This is Nkosi, and I highlighted her tenacity. Thank you, Nkosi. Pertinacity is a really good word. Um, it has to do with like determination and dedication and not giving up. So it's almost like perseverance, right? It's very similar to that. So we could say that pertinacity is um, when someone 
does not give up and they are determined almost to a stubborn degree. Sometimes pertinacity has a slightly negative connotation, not fully negative, but um, it can be seen as a little bit of ar arrogance or stubbornness, if that makes sense. So for this paragraph, we can say that even though he doesn't love the cat, it follows him everywhere. We can also say that he doesn't hurt the cat due to his guilt which we've already discussed. This dread was not exactly a dread of physical evil, and yet I should be at loss how otherwise to define it. I am almost ashamed to own, yes, even in this felon cell, I am almost ashamed to own that the terror and horror with which the animal inspired me had been heightened by one of the merest chimeras it would be possible to conceive. My wife had called my attention more than once to the character of the mark of the white hair, of which I have spoken, and which constituted the sole visible difference between the strange beast and the one I had destroyed. The reader will remember this mark, although large, had been originally very indefinite, but by slow degrees, nearly, imperceptible and which for a long time my reason struggled to reject as fanciful. It had at length assumed a rigorous distinctness of outline. It was now the representation of an object that I shudder to name. And for this above all, I loathed and dreaded and would have rid myself of the monster had I dared. It was now, I say, the image of a hideous, of a ghastly thing, of the gallows. Oh, mournful and terrible engine of horror and of crime, of agony and of death. What are gallows? So if gallows are a place where someone is hung, why would this image be haunting our narrator if the white mark on the cat looks like gallows? This is Jody, and I think it's because he hung his cat. Thank you, Jody.
So what I wrote to the side here is that the white mark on the cat resembles the gallows, which makes the narrator kind of paranoid. Um, and then I'm wondering, I'm thinking, does the mark really look like this? Or could it be some sort of symptom of the narrator's mental illness, psychosis or delusion? Um, could he be kind of making that shape up because of how guilty he feels, right? That's something that I'm wondering. What else did we learn about where the narrator's writing this story from? Where is he telling this story from? This is Anjali, and I think he's telling it from like a jail cell because it says even in this felon cell. Thank you, Anjali. That's true. So we didn't know that origin originally when we started reading, but he kind of adds this detail, even in this felon cell. So remember the beginning of the story, he said, tomorrow I die and today I unburden my soul. What can we infer now that we have this detail that he's writing from jail? This is Sophia, and I can infer that maybe he's on death row. Thank you, Sophia. So the narrator's telling his story from a jail cell. And we can infer that he has received a death sentence. We don't really know why he's received a death sentence yet, right? We don't have any evidence of why. So maybe something else is going to happen later in the story. What other words did you highlight in this paragraph? This is Nkosi and I highlighted Shamira's. Thank you, Nkosi. All right, I know we added a lot of notes. Does anybody need anything else before we keep reading? Yes. All right. And now I was indeed wretched beyond the wretchedness of mere humanity and a brute beast whose fellow I had contemptuously destroyed a brute beast to work out for me, for me, a man fashioned in the image of the high God, so much of insufferable woe. Alas, neither by day nor by night knew I the blessing of rest anymore. During the former, the creature left me no moment alone. And in the latter, I started hourly from dreams of unutterable fear to find the hot breath of the thing upon my face and its vast weight, an incarnate nightmare that I had no power to shake off, incumbent eternally upon my heart. So we can say The cat 
is showing love and affection to the narrator. He's even sleeping on his chest. And how does the narrator feel about that love and affection? How does our narrator feel about love and affection from the cat? This is Nicholas, and um, the narrator feels like he feels more, more and more guilty. The more, the, the more the cat loves him, the more guilty he feel, feels. Thank you, Nicholas. Was someone else about to talk as well? Yeah, I was going to kind of say that and then also that it makes him hate the cat even more. Yeah, definitely. So that's kind of what Nicholas was implying as well. Um, so and the narrator feels hatred for the cat because he is constantly reminded of his cruel deed of killing the, the previous cat. It's just a constant reminder. Did you highlight any words in this paragraph? This is Nkosi, and I highlighted contemptuously. Thank you, Nkosi. Contemptuously, it's a good word. Did anyone else highlight anything in this paragraph? All right, let's get a little further. Beneath the pressure of torment such as these, the feeble remnant of the good within me succumbed. Evil thoughts became my sole intimates, the darkest and most evil of thoughts. The moodiness of my usual temper increased to hatred of all things and of all mankind. While from the sudden, frequent, and ungovernable outbursts of a fury to which I now blindly abandoned myself, my uncomplaining wife, alas, was the most usual and the most patient of my sufferers. One day she accompanied me upon some household errand into the cellar of the old building, which our poverty compelled us to inhabit. The cat followed me down the steep stairs and nearly throwing me headlong, exasperated me to madness, uplifting an ax and forgetting in my wrath, the childish dread which had hitherto stayed my hand. I aimed a blow at the animal, which of course would have proved instantly fatal had it descended as I wished. But this blow was arrested by the hand of my wife. Goaded by the interference into a rage more than demoniacal, I withdrew my arm from her grasp and buried the ax in her brain. She fell dead upon the spot without a groan. Why did he murder his wife? because he was trying, this is Nkosi, and it's because he was trying to take his anger out on the cat, but his wife stopped him, and he wanted to take his anger out somewhere. Yeah, so um, when it says, the blow was arrested by the hand of my wife. So the first strike that he did 
the wife was trying to protect the cat. She put her hand up and was trying to protect it. But then it wasn't the first strike that killed her, right? So her interference, her protecting the cat made him so angry. And it says turned into a rage more than demoniacal and withdrew my arm from her grasp and buried the ax in her brain. She fell dead upon the spot without a groan. So that second hit really was this decision. But again, we get this um, implicit understanding that maybe our narrator, you know, obviously having these issues, maybe struggling from some type of mental illness as well as his alcoholism. So we can say he murdered his patient wife. He was angry that she got in his way while trying to kill the cat. This is Sophia, and I can infer maybe this is why he went to jail. Thank you, Sophia. So I put, this is most likely why our narrator is writing from jail. And then real quick before we go, what words did you highlight in these two paragraphs? This is Nkosi and I highlighted demonical. Thank you, Nkosi. This is Anjali and I highlighted goaded. Goaded. Thank you, Anjali. This is Karen, and I highlighted exasperated. Thank you, Karen. This is Nkosi, and I highlighted, highlighted hitherto. All right, guys, you can go ahead and write those words um, on the left column. Thank you so much for your participation today. Um, tomorrow, we should be able to finish the rest of the story. We left off right here with the wife dead, um, and we will see what happens next in the story. Um, thank you so much to Destiny, Luke, Nkosi, Jody, Anjali, Sophia, Nicholas, and Kieran. I appreciated hearing you guys today. Um, make sure to save your file, okay? Make sure you save it so you, that you don't lose anything that you did today. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys.